All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Lots to talk about today as we are getting closer to the summer showcase time frame where we have all of the rumors popping up before we get the actual showcases. We know that Ubisoft Forward is happening in June. We know Xbox will be doing their own showcase. And now we're getting more information as to kind of what we can expect from that showcase. And it is extremely exciting. But before we jump into this any further, if you are new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you have been watching for a while and aren't subscribed, I would appreciate hitting the subscribe button to help the channel grow. I do make daily gaming content. So if you like that stuff, if you like this video, hit the subscribe, hit the like and all of that good stuff. But let's start off here and let's talk about the upcoming Xbox showcase. So we've been hearing many rumors, many things going around, and now we kind of are getting a glimpse as to what we can expect from this showcase and the date that it will be happening. This here comes via The Verge saying, as the Xbox strategy continues to evolve inside Microsoft and Chowdhury's departure triggers more shakeups, Microsoft is in the middle of planning for its big summer Xbox showcase. And as we know, last week, Kareem Chowdhury left, which he he, it came out later that he was retiring and he was a huge part of Xbox, a part of some of their biggest advancements with like cloud gaming with the release of their, their major consoles and stuff. So it was definitely a loss that they're going to have to fill in those shoes. And then we also heard Sarah Bond send out an email internally about the future of Xbox and a new team that is coming up for game preservation and just kind of what they are looking forward to doing with Xbox. And it all sounds very, very exciting. So it does seem like Xbox is going in the right direction. It does seem like they are in good hands if you are a fan of the way that they are handling their ecosystem. And all of the future is going to be on display on June 9th. As it says here, I understand that this is set to take place on Sunday, June 9th. And Microsoft is currently planning to announce a new Gears of War game at the show. A Gears announcement won't be the only new Xbox game at the show, which will also include release dates for the upcoming Xbox games like Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, Avowed, Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, and of course, a new Call of Duty that's set to debut later this year. So, this is kind of what we are expecting here at the showcase. Obviously, there will be more games there. You can expect the Game Pass announcements. You can expect third-party games and, and probably some first-party games you just don't really or haven't really thought about. I believe there's also a tease. I think it was from Jez about potentially State of Decay showing up. There's State of Decay 3 showing up there, which would be absolutely insane. But for me, I'm a huge Gears fan. I'm even wearing my Delta Squad shirt here, and I am it's just extremely, extremely excited to see what they have in store for us for the next upcoming Gears game from the Coalition, how they're going to be utilizing Unreal Engine 5, how incredible that game is going to look. And it seems like we should have some high expectations for this, and we may actually be blown away by what is shown off when we do see Gears 6. We have some more insiders teasing Gear 6. Nate the Hate teases Gear 6. He said he would be surprised if 2024 came and went without a mention or look at Gear 6. So that's great to hear. It says the game will be that this is what next gen is about moment, which is crazy to think about because in my opinion, looking at what they have shown off for Hellblade 2, at least from a graphical standpoint, I'm more of a gameplay guy, but I, one of the things that you do want to see from a, a console in a generation, which we haven't really seen yet, is that huge jump in, in graphical fidelity. And to me, Hellblade 2, from what they've shown off graphically, is looking like what that next gen moment is is i mean finally 2024 and we're finally i think you're going to be getting that first real that this is what next gen is all about at least from what we have seen we'll have to see it in action when it does release but there's he's saying here that gear six is going to be that next gen moment so that's crazy because gear six to me has the gameplay that's extremely extremely fun i mean that's the main draw of gears it is the gameplay but at the same time if you remember how good gears five looked the coalition are wizards in creating some of the best looking games in the industry gears five still looks phenomenal so i'm not surprised that they're going to be able to bring out something absolutely crazy with gears six he says here that Gear 6 will be much like Gears 1 was the moment on Xbox 360, which was an insane moment. I mean, I'm, I've am i just playing again the Gears 6 or the Gears of War Ultimate Edition. And I, I know that gets the upgrades and everything, but that game, it looks absolutely phenomenal still. And even if you go and load that thing up on the Xbox 360, such a great looking game. So 
that is exciting to hear that gear six is going to give us that moment again at least from what they're saying and it says again gear six is coming out for the xbox series x and s and he's not the only one that has weighed in in terms of people being excited about gears and and what they can sh what they have to show off you have shinobi here on reset era replying to somebody who made a comment about i believe hellblade 2 and the person said those are some beautiful screenshots such a stunning looking game and shinobi replies and says wait until you see gears people aren't ready so i mean I, I can't wait. I can't wait. This being very much hyped up here as something that is going to blow everybody away in terms of giving that truly next generation moment graphically. And again, not surprising because we've seen the coalition with their work in Unreal Engine 5, especially with that Matrix demo that they helped work on. And from their history, from their past, they seem to be that studio at Xbox that consistently is able to get the most out of the platform when developing their game. So I can't wait. And in terms of the coalition and what they are doing with how good they are developing and graphics and stuff like that, apparently according to Jez Corden here, who was on the iron Lords podcast, he says that Kate Rayner, who is the vice president and technical director at the coalition now runs her own division and is helping other Xbox studios get to the coalition level with unreal engine. And you can go down. This is her LinkedIn profile and in her LinkedIn profile. It says collaborate with engineering teams across Xbox, Microsoft gaming, gaming devices, MSR cloud and AI and Xbox game studios on technical issues and strategic planning so again very cool to hear that this is definitely a good thing when you have a studio you have a, a developers at a studio who can get the most out of the platform that they are developing on taking that knowledge and passing it on to the other studios so that they can achieve those same results and maybe this has me thinking that potentially we're going to start seeing that level that quality just bar being raised with all of xbox game studio games that go along those lines of kind of a more realistic realism graphic style and really want that high fidelity i think we're going to see a lot more of that output here from xbox game studios if what we are hearing here is actually true so then you have to also think about then there's that trade-off right about we've just heard all about the fps debates going back and forth 30 fps versus 60 fps and if you really want the most insane fidelity at least on these current consoles there may have to be some compromise there in terms of the frames per second so we will see but i am excited to see what we're going to get out of gear six from the coalition and what we're going to get out of this upcoming xbox june showcase it should be a pretty incredible showcase and another game that looks like we're going to be seeing at the showcase is the upcoming call of duty black ops golf war and i'm excited about that too because golf or black ops has been probably my favorite series within call of duty so i'm excited to see how they turn this into a new game based in the golf War, which i think is a cool setting it says here that it's been a wild 24 hours for xbox showcase rumors and now tom warren at the verge is reporting that this year's call of duty title black ops golf War will also be featured at the showcase and as previously reported that is their new game the actual campaign of this game is going to be more open world but not like we got with modern warfare it's actually going to be i think more in depth from what we do understand it says here speaking with sources it's been said that xbox is gearing up for an announcement on its back catalog of games as well following the acquisition of activision blizzard 2 so it may be an insane part of the showcase when it comes to call of duty you get to see the first gameplay of golf war and then hopefully which is something i thought was going to happen sooner we finally get that just massive drop of older Call of Duty games into Xbox Game Pass. We know that Xbox did go back. They did open up the server so you could play the older Call of Duties. If you were to purchase them, they put the games on sale as well. And a lot of people were jumping in and playing all of the older Call of Duties. And then we're expecting them to drop this on Xbox Game Pass. So we'll have tons of people jumping in right away into these games to kind of revitalize those servers and get us back to the golden age of Call of Duty back when I think Call of Duty was the best in around 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011. Like those were the great years of Call of Duty. And especially when you have millions of people instantly are going to have access to it from these subscription servers, I think we will see those servers revitalized even more. So very cool. Lots of great stuff to look forward to when it comes to Xbox this year and when it comes to their upcoming showcase in June.
But let's jump over here. Let's talk about a very interesting claim here from the infamous Michael Patcher. And he's talking about Xbox Game Pass. We know that Xbox Game Pass from their last official announcement was that they had 34 million subscribers. And in that announcement, Xbox did confirm that that 34 million subscribers included their Xbox Game Pass core members. And a lot of people are wondering, well, that number seems relatively low because they have like 50 million Xbox Live subscribers so how do they only have 34 million core members that they really lose that many people when transferring over to core well, michael patcher seems to think of that the reporting was just simply a mistake and that xbox game pass will reach over 200 million subscribers in the next 10 years he says this is what it says gaming analyst michael patcher believes that Xbox Game Pass will reach over 200 million subscribers in the next 10 years. Patcher also highlighted what he says is a common misconception regarding Xbox Game Pass subscriber numbers. Says here that Patcher believes Xbox will continue to thrive going into the future, namely its Game Pass subscription service. In Patcher's latest episode of Patcher Factor posted to YouTube, he stated that Game Pass will reach 200 million subscribers within the next decade, citing Xbox's complete commitment to its success as a partial reason. He also said that the previous claims of Xbox counting gold members now called Game Pass Core as Game Pass subscribers are false and that Xbox's total subscriber count for Game Pass does not include gold or core individuals. So it's an interesting take because these numbers came directly from Xbox. I'm not sure why they would report a lower number if that was the case, or maybe they simply just made a mistake, or maybe they've decided to kind of still break up these subscribers and when determining how they report their overall Game Pass subscribers. Maybe they look on activity. Like, I'm not sure what they would do or how they would do it but you think if you're xbox you put game pass score in there to take over for xbox live gold the reason you do that is so that you can report just massive numbers for the actual game pass subscriber numbers either way game pass is successful phil spencer has said it multiple times is profitable sustainable all of those types of things but 200 million subscribers in the next 10 years if Game Pass were to hit that, that would be absolutely insane. So it's a lofty prediction, but we will see. Game Pass is growing, and they're getting more games into it. And once the ABK games start dropping, once Call of Duty starts dropping in there, I think it will definitely make the subscribers grow faster than it is right now. And let's jump over here. Let's talk about Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake. So we heard that the game is still in development. Saber Interactive is still working on it. But apparently Sony wants absolutely nothing to do with Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, which opens this game up for somebody else who wants something to do with it. And I think this is an opportunity here for Xbox to come in here and get this as a game on Game Pass or a console exclusive or something. Bring it back to the home where it first launched which was the og xbox because playstation had it and if they want nothing to do with it if the game is looking good now if saber interactive is going to turn this into a good remake this is a big opportunity here for xbox but this is here jeff crubb has claimed that sony wants nothing to do with the upcoming star wars knights of the old republic remake which is alive and well at saber interactive this was in a tweet him saying my understanding is that sony wants nothing to do with it anymore which is why i thought it was dead obviously though saber still seems very determined and i have a lot of trust in saber so the game is still alive which I am on the fence whether that is a good or a bad thing because if they ruin this game, I will be very upset, very sad about it. This is one of my favorite games. And the other side is if they somehow knock it out of the park, then that will be just amazing. So we'll see what happens here. But I think there's a huge opportunity if Xbox is looking at this and saying, hey, we can bring this game home. Whereas previously, PlayStation was trying to cut us out of getting it on day one. If nobody, if PlayStation doesn't want it anymore, now is Xbox's opportunity. We'll see if, if that even, if they're even thinking about that, if that does ever end up happening. When it comes to, again, we'll go jump back here to the Xbox showcase. Apparently, id Software, this next game is also going to be shown at the Xbox showcase as Nate the Hate. And he said that later on the same thread as the Gears of War thread. So if you're looking for some id software stuff some gears of war the xbox showcase is going to be we don't really know what the next game is whether it is the next doom or if it potentially is a quake we're not sure i don't believe that we have the actual confirmation or there's too many leaks as to exactly what they are working on but uh, we will see i mean anytime they announce a game people are interested people are listening so that's an exciting a piece of news there end off with this one here 
Tamim Antonides, as we know, he did leave Ninja Theory, and, and people were saying this in the comments when I did first report it, that he has been gone. He, if you go on his social media and stuff, and he's just been posting pictures on vacation, and he finally addressed it. He finally addressed it on, I believe this is an Instagram post or something, and it says here, cats out of the bag. Yes, I've left Ninja Theory, the company I founded and led creative, creatively for 20 years. Exhausted, proud, and satisfied, I was ready to step off after Hellblade 2, but stayed on for two more years to make sure the foundation were in place to fulfill our mission to craft life-changing art with game-changing tech which you will see in hellblade 2 very soon i'm forever proud and grateful to the ninjas and i want the world to know ninja theory is safe and sound in the best hands possible huge shout out to microsoft for taking care of our baby and letting us grow to become who we are as for me whatever i do next i'll always be a ninja so officially he addressed it now because obviously when the uh, journalist or the, went to visit Ninja Theory, they were like, well, where is he? And, and they had to let them know that he wasn't with the studio anymore. I believe he made uh, millions and millions of dollars by selling the studio to Microsoft. So he probably just took his money and said, hey, now I'm going to go on a very long vacation and just enjoy myself until probably he's ready to jump back in to develop those games. So he's been gone for a while. It wasn't really anything too new when the news reports did come out but i'll end the video there guys if you did enjoy this video make sure to hit that thumbs up if you are new here hit that subscribe and i will catch you guys in the next video